Analyzing and Presenting Data, Part 2, Quantitative Data. Aloha, I'm Dr. Katherine P. Fulford, Professor, Learning Design and Technology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I'd like to provide a special thanks to all those faculty who contributed content to this video. This is a three-part video series, starting with Part 1, The Introduction, Part 2, Quantitative Data, and Part 3, Qualitative Data. This is Part 2, Quantitative Data. We will be talking about quantitative data from surveys and tests. There are certain stages of quantitative analysis, starting with exploratory. This is where you look at all of the data to see what's there. Next is data cleaning. That's to take care of anomalies or inconsistencies. Then last is your basic analysis. You are going to review simple descriptive information, counts, percentages, and frequencies on tables. Next is data cleaning. There are some basic issues with data cleaning that you need to deal with. Some is missing data. For example, if you have a test and half of the answers aren't there, you can take this test out because it was incomplete. You can also have an outlier. That means on the scale of all of your data, one person is either very low or very high. But you can only have one outlier. If you have one on either end, of course it will average itself. If you have two that are at the beginning or at the end, then it's no longer an outlier. And it means that two people had that same data. But you also might have some inconsistencies. For example, if you had a five-point scale and everybody except one person answered five, you may want to take a look at that one that answered one and see if that is truly just a mistake and somebody answered one instead of five. How would you find out that? You'd look at their comments, and if their comments were overwhelmingly positive, you might decide that you will just switch the scale on that survey. You also might find that there are errors. For example, somebody used ABCs instead of 1, 2, 3s, and so you'll just have to make those conversions. So those are just some examples of issues that you might find with your data. I'm sure that there are others that you'll run across, so just be objective in what you decide to remove or to change. Presenting numerical data. Numbers can be presented in tables or charts and graphs. So with quantitative data, you want to use tables when the individual values are important, the individual values are compared to each other, precise values are required, and you have a lot of variables. You want to use figures when your message is in the shape itself and or your results reveal relationships among multiple variables. I'll be showing examples of these later. So what makes a good table? You want to make sure that it's readable, that there's a logical data placement, that there are clear column and row headings, that there's a title at the top, that there are clear reporting units, and you want to follow APA style for titles. Okay, let's look at table design. You want to plan your row and column categories to highlight patterns in columns. You want to arrange the data according to magnitude so there's a numerical progression down the column. Avoid too many rows or columns that make the tables too complex and hard to read. It's better to include two or more simple tables rather than one larger or more complex one. You want to present your numbers simply, so in most cases you want to round to two decimals. Use clear table titles so that readers can understand the content. Include information about the source of the data. Avoid the look of a spreadsheet. Use lines, bolding, and color to aid the interpretation. Here's an example of a good table. Okay, notice that you have a proper table title, APA style. It's a good descriptive title. Next, your categories are broken into three parts, gender, age, and education. And this was a good strategy to use bold wherever the number was the highest. So it's quick and easy to read this table. Notice that the reason we use a table is we wanted the individual values compared. We also had a lot of variables, so we wanted to use a table for that reason. And the other thing is you want to avoid too many Google form pie charts. 
A lot of people do this because they're pretty. The problem is you're taking up a lot of real estate in your presentation or a paper to show these. So what you want to do is maybe choose one or two of those but for the rest of your information, you can easily put it in a table, especially when you're limited on time or limited on space. Now, there are a number of types of charts and graphs. Here are a few. Pie charts. This is when you're displaying how the total data are distributed between different categories. Bar charts help you display and compare numbers, frequencies, or other measures. Line graphs show time series data, how one or more variables change over a period of time. Your scatter plots show relationship between pairs of measurements made for the same object or individual. What makes a good figure? A clear APA title, simple, clear axis labels, elements that allow easy interpretation, a legend explaining the elements, a scale proportionate to the data, and a zero point, clear reporting units, and of course a minimum of clutter. The use of color and shading can be very helpful. Here are some tips. Use color and shading to distinguish certain areas. If there is a sequence to the data, use colors or shading to reflect that from dark to light tones. Use the darkest colors at the bottom of a column. Do not use busy patterns and do not use vertical and horizontal lines in the same column. It can create a visual distortion. Let's look at this good bar chart example. Very quickly, you can discern from the shape what the message is. You can see quickly that in the post-test and these two items were very low, so that's something we would want to look into. For pictograms, these are similar to bar charts, but the pictures replace the bars. You've probably seen these before. You use these only to represent data on a single scale. Pictograms should be of the same size but can be cut vertically to show part of a pictogram, like this. There are some fundamental principles for presenting data. You want to make sure it's clear, that it's correct, that it's concise, and of course that it's consistent. And most of all, you want to avoid clutter. Aloha and mahalo. Now it's time to watch our final video, Analyzing and Presenting Data, Part 3, Qualitative Results.